Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our very first webinar this semester at the uh, Center for Family and Population Research at the National University of Singapore. Um, I am Jean Yang, Professor of Sociology here at the National University of Singapore. Um, for this first webinar, we are very uh, fortunate and honored to have a distinguished uh, scholar and a longtime friend of mine, Professor Wu Xiaogang, to come to share with us his uh, research. Uh, Professor Wu Xiaogang is a Yufen Global Professor of Social Science and the Director of Center for Applied Social and Economic Research at NYU Shanghai and Professor of Sociology at uh, New York University in New York. Um, Professor Wu has done a lot of path-breaking research in uh, China's uh, inequality and mobility, most uh, notably his work um, on Hukou system, educational stratification and uh, intergenerational mobility. Um, Professor Wu uh, has led many large-scale surveys and studies in um, China and as well as in Hong Kong. Uh, the most uh, famous one is Hong Kong Panel Study of Social Dynamics that he has led uh, since 2011 and now have many waves of uh, panel data. Another one is the Shanghai Urban Neighborhood Survey uh, th that he has led uh, since 2015. And there are many, many other surveys and, uh, uh, that he has led and is uh, launching at the moment. Um, so today, um, uh, he's also the chief editor of the Chinese so Sociological Review, and that is a really important um, sociological journal that has published many important work recently, in recent years. So um, to say the least, he's, uh, Professor Wu is, um, has made a great contribution to the um, literature and scholarship in um, contemporary China's social changes and stratification. So today he's gonna to share with us his recent work on fertility decline and trends in educational um, gender inequality in China. So without further ado, let's welcome Professor Wu. Xiaogang, please. Okay, so thank you, Jean. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, here we go, okay. So indeed, this is the second time, okay, I gave talk at your center. Uh, last time I was, uh, I think was, I was visiting uh, Nanyang Technology University. I just stopped by your center and gave a talk. I'm, migration and the uh, educational inequality. Okay, so thank you for inviting me. And I recently, uh, I moved to Shanghai, okay, from Hong Kong University of Science Technology, where I spent my seven years, uh, 17 years, okay. Um, so after I moved to Shanghai, I started, okay, um, a center, okay, with the same name, okay, I, with the same mission. And I hope to build a network uh, partner uh, institutions, right? um, particularly in Asia. So this, this center, we just had our uh, our lunch event in November. Okay, November. Uh, we have uh, we already partner with other uh, several other uh, research centers. Okay, in China, uh, U.S. and uh, Hong Kong. Okay, um, so I hope. Uh, uh, this uh, this will be a great opportunity for us to build, uh, you know, to get to know each other, okay, to build a network, and um, even formally before, okay, I, as I said, is that I ask uh, Jin Yang because it's a complicated bureaucratic process. We didn't, okay, uh, proceed, but I think even for informal, right, I know uh, quite a few of you in the audience, right, uh, very well, uh, so. Uh, in the future, we could ha have uh, some activities, right? Or even research joint work together, okay? Now, before I get started, I would like, I only have 40 minutes maximum, but I still, I want to take the chance, right? To give you a, 
a little bit of advertisement on, on the new center in Shanghai. Okay. So we only have Ch English version, no Chinese, as if we were, we are located in China, right? But it appears more like an international, okay? We don't have a Chinese version of our website yet, but if you, you have a chance, just go to visit our website, kesa.shanghai.nyu.edu, okay? Uh, and uh, well, next time when you see this logo, that's us, okay? I think it's well-designed logo, okay? Uh, for we want to do some conduct research. I call it it's a localized research that makes a global impact. Okay, and we focus on uh, Hong Kong. Well, I spend most of the time of my career right? I, in the Pure River Delta, now Shanghai. Uh, we have Shanghai Urban Neighborhood Survey. What I was going to uh, say is uh, here we might also want to consider to launch a new project, okay, which is signature project and at Wang Wang Yu Shanghai. Um, uh, last semester, I invited the Jin right, to give us, a, I think, the first or second right, a seminar talk uh, at our center. Before our center was officially launched, okay, uh, we also share very co common interest on family migration and in particular, early childhood development. Okay, so that's, uh, I hope we'll have more chance, right, to, to learn from each other. Mostly we learn from you guys, so, because you already have a critical mass there. Okay, we don't, okay. Now, so what I'm going to do today, okay, this is, a, this is something, uh, the project, I already have a working paper uh, uh, soon, okay, it will be available online. So uh, the, today what I'm going to talk about is, is something at least a, 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 a field I'm interested is gender inequality, okay? The roadmap of gender inequality, we have serious papers, but how this will related to some demo, demographic process, uh, namely now is a fertility decline or family structure change, right? Now, and uh, in this particular paper, I have several other paper going on, but this one uh, already, I have a working paper, right? So I'm gonna talk about data, measurement and analytical strategy and share with you some findings and some conclusion or further discussion for next step, okay? Now, uh, as Jean uh, uh, mentioned, right, so my research interest is uh, focused mostly on inequality and stratification in China during the economic, whole reform era, China's economic transition, right? So with my, um, so I summarize all my work, okay, uh, published in annual review of sociology, uh, in 2019, okay, so one part, which I think we still need more work, is gender inequality, okay, which hasn't been, uh, well, there are some, but not in the literature, traditional, the market transition between from these particular perspectives, okay. Now, I still believe in social change, marketization is the main driving forces, you know, behind uh, many changes, okay, family, demographic, okay, migration, and the even value changes, right? Uh, the main driving forces behind that. Now, in this particular uh, a, a topic, right? I would like to, we would like to ask questions: How does marketization, right, or China's market transition affect gender inequality in labor market? I think there are a lot of speculation, some researchers, but not in the very holistic framework. So, what I, we have done some work with my former advisees, right, uh, Guangye. So, um, uh, well. Basically, it's a serious papers, okay? So first we prove marketization, right? How do you me measure marketization? How gender inequality was affected by the regional prefectural level marketization, okay? Net of other social economic changes, for example, education, uh, economic development, okay? So this was a paper published in Work Employment Society, but then we also look at, uh, uh, well, what is the mechanism? Okay. What is the mechanism? Occupational segregation. How marketization affect the occupation, gender occupational segregation? And that, because gender, we know occupational segregation play a very important role in gender inequality in the labor market, right? So that's, and furthermore, okay, we believe gender is something, of, so class, gender, and the race, right? These are three major dimensions of inequality um, from sociological point of view. But gender, there's some special, okay, unique feature of the gender, this variable or dimension is, well, gender is men and the women, right? But for men and the women, they're not just to say, hey, you're in two groups, right? There are some kind of individually in this group and that group, there are some people who link to each other, okay? 
So basically, it's a marriage, family as a unit. Okay, family as a unit. So, uh, so our our recent paper just uh, hasn't impressed. Okay, been impressed. The family status and the women's career. We look at the women's gender, family roles. Okay, marriage and uh, and uh, and uh, childbirth. How that will affect the women's career mobility. I believe. Uh, Jing and maybe Mu Zhen, uh, you also have some papers right um, on these issues. But this is using uh, this data. Uh, uh, this paper uh, where in this paper we're using CGS as two o o eight data. Okay, it's been wow, a long time ago. It's, uh, but recently we finally finished and get it published. Okay, now the question still still is how. Okay, so what we found here is that uh, we found okay motherhood punishment. Okay, this is universal, right? But again, it tend to be, you know, become worse when in the latest reform period, okay, because of the marginalization. So that's a findings, I think is a contribution, uh, important contribution of this paper, okay, in this paper. But the question still, we know women's gender role, right, play, play a hindering role, okay, in affecting the labor market achievement. Um, the question is how, okay, no. So with uh, another, uh, my co-author Ji Yingchun again. She spent uh, some time right, as a poster at NUS. So really, you guys have a critical mass and also disseminate all these kind of works. Okay. So we we discuss that and we believe okay. Uh, so this is a more like a, a review paper on equal care, on equal work, right? So care, family care, and the work towards more comprehensive understanding of gender inequality in post-reform China. So we need to look at the role, the role of women, okay, uh, in within the family in order to understand their changing status relative to men outside in the public sphere, in the market, labor market, right? So when we talk about occupational segregation, well, this is all in the market, labor market, right? When we talk about education, labor mobility, migration, this is all in the, you know, in the labor market, right? But well, for, for gender, okay, the particular, the, the variable, the gender, right? So this is something we need to, to look at, use a holistic, holistic perspective and look at both, okay, the obligation within family and, uh, and the work, okay, and, uh, and that could be a, a very interactive process, right? So it, I think this idea comes from a very early, the earliest paper I worked on with two of my former students, right? Now this is a, we use different data, very crude analysis of fertility decline and women's empowerment in China, okay? The history is that why I mean, interesting. This is a, is an NGO at, in Washington D.C. After my presentation in uh, in PAA, they approached me, say, "Well, you might, why don't you write a, a commission uh, commission paper for, for us? They have a project uh, on international comparative study of women's empowerment." Okay, so that's that's uh, that's initially how this idea come from. Okay, original idea come from here. So, basic idea is very simple. Okay, is Women's reproductive role is universal, but how, you know, to what extent, how it varies, you know, the varies by different social contexts, right? The hindering effect on their so productive work in labor market could vary across society with different institutional arrangement and the social welfare system, okay? So it might be a good, right, to look at, the, you know, China, uh, well, Hong Kong is completely laser field capitalism, right? So we have another s solution, which is, well, you hire domestic helper, right? As, surrogate to mother, right, to take care of the children and the household, also work in order for, for women to participate in the labor market, okay, to work. Now, so I have a, another paper on that, okay. So basically we come up with, in this review paper, we come up with the idea, okay, I'm gonna be very quick here before I get to, uh, get to our empirical findings. So the holistic framework is that, uh, well, Dan Wei, my very first paper I published in, on Dan Wei, right? So now Dan Wei, I see Dan Wei as a, as a, a, a welfare system, okay, during a socialist period, which can basically can alleviate the tension between work and the family, care and the family, uh, care and the work, right? Because that way is a multifunctional institutions, right? Just imagine, so most of you don't have this experience, but if you're living in that way, right, you could have a that way would provide a child care. You can just send your kids, right, to, you know, when you come to your office to work, right, send the kids to kindergarten, maybe just downstairs, right? And you can feed that during the break, okay? Uh, and, uh, and uh, but this kind of, so this is a system, right? Integrated life, work and the life together, okay? That's called units, right? It's multifunctional units. 
But this, uh, so, so there are some tensions, okay, tensions between women's productive and reproductive role, okay. When China in the 1950s encouraged women to work, right, so that's certainly, the, but then through this kind of unique institutional arrangement, right, it, tend, it seems like uh, uh, it's fine, okay, so China has achieved high rates of labor force participation, right. So, but after economic reform, right, the, the, the liberal, okay, the capitalist ideology, right, will say, well, in the damn way, in the firms, right, you got to make money, right, it's a profit driven, so therefore social responsibility is not a part of the obligations, no, you can receive some subsidies, you can receive high wages, right, salaries, but child care is a responsibility, you know, you have to take about yourself, not your damn way, right, so damn way would no longer run kindergartens, right, or even canteens or some, some library or whatever. There was a lot of things, and except for universities, still we have that way, right? So if you've got a job in food, then people will say, oh, you know, you, know, you would have a kindergarten, right? You would have a privilege to have access to this, okay? But either, so most of the child care, right? Either you will return to private family or you have to rely on your, your elderly parents to take care of that, okay, for solution, or through the market like Hong Kong, right, is that, uh, well, you know, if women need to work, then they hire domestic helpers from Philippines or Indonesia to help them, right, um, to take care of the household. So these are something, okay, this, this is our framework to state, you can see. Now what we say is that this family is a public, it is a private sphere, and, uh, and the labor market, of course, is a public sphere, right? So these two sphere under Chinese that way system is sort of mixed and integrated, but because of market reform, then uh, because the market will let, let the re-separation of these two. So many responsibilities, right? Or, or child care, care responsibility now, will just uh, relegate back to family, right? So it's your own business, not your, your employer's business, okay? Now, what I do here is that uh, this is from our early work, you know, is that before most work, right, on this is that we look at the women's general on the labor market, okay? So this is, a, this is something, separations, okay? But there's another channel, okay, pathways, or turn new pathways, fertility, right? So fertility decline will lead to, in my, this paper, okay, will lead to uh, so-called sip shift, sip shift decline, okay? And then, of course, will affect the, resource allocation, okay, internal resource within family, within the household, okay. Now, once you have fertility decline, so for single families, therefore, there's no choice for you to have a, you know, exercise some preference, right, to prioritize your investment. It's the kids, your only daughter or son, okay. So people's household, household investment on children's education might be gender neutral, okay, uh, uh, therefore, Okay, so that will, we point out, this could be a, a alternative, alternative pathways. You can see here is that uh, because of decline of fertility, right, uh, then women's education benefit from, from, from having fewer siblings, right? And their education certainly will contribute to further decline of fertility, which we know, right, the standard the demography literature, and so on. Okay, so that's, that's our, in 2014, uh, their papers, okay. So what we are going to do, okay, is uh, in China, in this particular paper, in China, um, what well, we know, uh, just to follow uh, a, 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 a secular trend, right, is that a similar trend in China, education and gender inequality has been declining, okay, in, in, in developing, most developed countries, including China, including China, uh, these are the figures, okay, um, it showed that there are many explanations of this, right, so structure, transformation of economy, increased return to uh, higher education. Now you have you know, more jobs in office, so women can do that, right? And because of returns to this, uh, the jobs, right, uh, office or, you know, in the tertiary sectors, therefore women have also have more incentive. The more jobs for them they can do and the more returns for them. So women are more interested or are incentivized to, uh, to receive more higher educations, okay? So that, and a third, you know, the change of the social norms, right? So before we believe that, well, don't invest on, on women, right? Uh, well, that's uh, certainly now, I think uh, more or less it's already changed after four decades of, of socialist experiment, right? And some 
gender, legal uh, protection, etc. But in China, okay, people look at this fluctuation of gender inequality, right? Uh, then mostly, okay, easily, okay, attribution would be say, hey, no, because it's government state of policy, okay, state of policy. But again, state of how state of policy related. So state said, oh, don't discriminate women, then women's education will increase. I don't think, you know, the pathway is so simple, okay, so straightforward. So therefore, the early observation uh, by some of the, most of them in our circle, right? So Zhou Xuanguang, Dang Chuan, and Lao Yao Lu, and Hem and Han, and Yu Xie, right? So they, they observed this trend and the fluctuation. They said, oh, cultural revolution, because of, you know, the government's ideology, egalitarian ideology that bring down education, uh, uh, gender, gender gap, okay, um, uh, gender gap in education. But then it cannot okay, explain a recent decline in education of, uh, uh, in uh, education by gender gap. Okay. Now, so I would like to bring back the so-called a family. So family is association, is a unit, agent, important agent, right? So you have men and the women, right? Together. So this is not, a, we're not talking about a men and women as, a, as atoms, right? It's an individual, isolated individuals. So one woman and one man, you have a pairs, right? In, within the, you know, the, uh, well, in the statistic, you don't see that, but you should, you should know, you know, so in these two groups, there are some people that are paired with each other, right? For, for some reasons, okay? So therefore, uh, so our argument will say, we have to go down policy matters, but then you could look at how policy matters is still family is a main agent to make the, investment, uh, no, make the decision on investment, right? So the demographic changes within the family, namely now fertility decline may also affect the resource, resource demand side and also contribute to reduction in educational gender gap. So this is our main argument. Now, it's easy to understand, right? So if parents have few children, then the resource constraint to sponsor children education may be less severe, then it's not necessary to for them to prioritize, right? So many cases that you know, w uh, sons or or, uh, or or males will benefit from from uh, from uh, parents' preference, right? Now, so the main argument would be, well, we're not talking about say just the superficial size of education attainment. So we're talking about a fertility decline. So this is a trend, right? This is a demographic trend, leads to the change the superficial size configuration. Well, that will lead to, well, we know the process, right? The resource allocation within the family. Okay, so daughters or girls tend to benefit more from reduced the shipship size. Okay, uh, that contributed to, to the decline gender, gender inequality in education. Okay, so here our, our, our research or argument will build upon three. The first is shipship configuration. This is standard literature, right? In, in social demographies. Um, on, on, on the subship size and, and educational attainment association. A second part is on educational inequality, okay, education inequality. And at the society level, but then we look at, you know, the internal, in, in the, within the family, the, what's happening, right? The third one is, is temporary, okay, it's a trend, okay, the trend. So these are the three. I think this one is, a, is a, our starting point, right? And I don't think in the Western, the literature, most literature in the Western countries, right? Uh, gender inequality, uh, you know, gender is not something, a, an important factor when they look at association between citizenship size and educational attainment, because simply they said, well, it's a Western family, Western parents, they don't exercise this, right? There's no some strong, uh, uh, you know, some preference or gender asymmetry right, in educational investment on children. Um, but things could be different in Asia, okay, particularly in East Asia okay, uh, countries. And the third one is uh, is is temporary uh, temporary trend, right? So over over time, right? When you see these changes, right, would lead to uh, women will benefit more than that will will come back to the aggregate level, okay? Uh, 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 temporary trend. Now, I because time constraint, so this literature, perhaps I'll just uh, just uh, skip, right? Um, Theory, okay, many of you should know this, right? So this, again, this is only the literature talking about ship size, the association between ship size and the educational attainment, okay? So mo I think the recent, uh, most recent, uh, you know, the model, right? The resource dilution models, okay? 
uh, or recently, uh, this kind of literature have received the methodological challenge because the association could be spurious, right? So whether you know, it's an endogeneity of sipship size or fertility, right? So that's, that's a, you know, it's a, now you should be familiar with this kind of jargons, okay? So uh, Guo Guang, right, they, can, they had a paper, uh, ASR, uh, contributed using change models and the many other economists, right, using this called external uh, shock, right, uh, to instruments, okay, the internal, uh, the, the, in, the, uh, the ship ship size or, uh, yes, uh, as instrumental variables, etc. okay, so in, uh, in uh, well, depending on the data, right, so um, um, there are many, many other uh, terms of uh, research, um, this research, you know, whether this, this family unobserved selectivity uh, play a role, okay, but, well, the results also were quite different, okay, so in Western countries. Um, well, sometimes they found, okay, there is the effect, even if you take into a control, taking into account of the, the endogeneity issues, okay. Now, beyond the Western context, uh, results are even more uh, diverse, okay, uh, inconsistent. Um, well, Indonesia, Malay, uh, well, this Indonesia uh, study also showed, right, so, you know, ship ship size could have a positive effect, okay. Uh, in her paper published in Demography, she also uh, uh, considered, okay, so endogeneity of fertility, but it seems like, uh, well, they, they still find that from negative uh, to neutral to positive that varies by social context, okay. Now, more general, these are all specific country studies. In general, more general uh, research is that for the cross-national comparative studies, okay, you pull all different data from all comparable data from different countries. They also showed that welfare regimes matters. Okay, Xu Jun, okay, so one of my friends. Uh, specific public policy matters, okay, Jun Hongju Park, right, has a paper, I believe in the ISSM. And also uh, Peng Sui Ling and the David Post, they have a paper uh, on Hong Kong, right, uh, uh, using uh, you know, the introduction of Hong Kong's uh, uh, free education at, uh, at, as, 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 as sort of like policy uh, shock. Now, the two highly relative articles, right, is a Yu Xie's article, okay, many of you know that, and the Dong Chang and Lu Yao's article, using China, this is in Hong Kong. But I think I, I uh, for Hong, this particular paper uh, published in, in Sociological Education, uh, um, uh, there are something, okay, new, I think it deserves a, a serious, well, the new things is gender symmetric things, okay, so the elderly sp spacing, Right, so what do we found? We, I think it makes sense to those people who are familiar with East Asia, particularly Chinese family, right? So elderly sister help a younger brother, right? So they sacrifice. So resource transfer, not only, uh, you know, it's, uh, it happened across generations, right? But even within the generation, among siblings, particularly you have multiple, multiple, uh, well, have more siblings uh, and there was, uh, you know, larger spacing, right? So that's finding, I think it makes sense. Okay, Lu Ya uh, and the, uh, Dang Chai has a paper showing that uh, the cohort of variation okay, by state policy, this is something nothing new, right? Gender is not of their focus, but here they don't take care of the, look, look, they didn't look at the, the, the temporary trend, okay? Because of the, I think uh, the, uh, the, 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 the sample size issues. Okay, all right, so, well, here, okay. So this is a history of Chinese, uh, Chinese, uh, 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 well, the fertility decline, right? So. There's some uh, milestones from 1963, 1971, and the 1971 China policy is most well known, right? But even before that, right, China's fertility after economic reform it's already declining. Right? Wang Feng uh, has a long argument. On it. Been trying to argue that uh, well, you know, you can't attribute all this reduction of the, the population uh, or the control, right, you know, to to one child policy because social economic development that will naturally will lead to fertility decline. Okay, so that's, uh, um, so our study first with dynamic, right? Dimension, okay, gender, we combine these two, but in the perspective fertility decline, right? That leads to, that's the framework I laid out in my early work in 2014, okay? But with the new data, more rigorous research now. I've been waiting for China family panel studies. Before I had the, an early version using CGSS, but simply because of sample size issues, many variables are not, not available, okay. But this is a very rich data set, okay. So many of you have experience to use this data, so I'm not gonna talk about it. So analytical sample, okay, I restrict to 19 
1945 to 1994, okay? So, and uh, the good thing here is that uh, these people, we could also find their siblings, their basic information, their siblings, through the common link to the same parents. So therefore, if you pull individuals whose siblings right, can also be identified, they do have their siblings, they, the, the birth order and all the, the parents information, of course, and but also the, the siblings educational uh, attainment, okay, attainment. So these are uh, the, the, the data I'm, I'm, I'm using. And the dependent variable is still very straightforward is years of schooling completed. Uh, but also I, in my paper, I also look at the quality of education by looking at the mathematics test and the verbal test scores, right? It's highly correlated with education attainment, but not necessarily the same, okay? But the, in terms of the education, the, 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 uh, the, the substantive findings, right? Regardless of what outcome, a dependent variable use are quite similar, okay, quite similar. That means if you have more, more, more siblings, right? Your test score will be lower, your, 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 your math score will be lower. Okay? Now, so our analytical strategy, other variables, the sip size, post order, okay, and the hookah origin, which I'm also interested, right, the, the family background of ethnic minorities. And the larger sample size would also allow me to, to break down uh, the samples into five cohorts, okay. The most two, three, uh, two recent cohorts, I would say this more, more under strict uh, birth control policy, uh, but I did not, specifically designed to one one China policy. Okay, I, well, I did not cut it in, in 2007, 2073 or, or 1979, or, or, no, sorry, 1973 or 90, 1979. Okay, so, so you see most of people do that. So I'm not interested in particularly just the one child policy. I want it, I'm interested in the general decline of, of fertility and the re reduce the sample size. Okay, now, well, these are from the data, right? You show, we showed that is the education increases, but uh, citizenship size decline, okay? So that's, you know, these are two trends, okay, from the data I have, but we want to link these two, right? Link the two demographic trends, right? Through a micro process. That's, that's, that's I think that's contribution of this article, okay? Now, you can see here, well, these are some described statistics show that, uh, that uh, ship ship size decline. Okay, so that's for sure because the fertility decline uh, right now is for the most one child policy. They only have, on average, right, have 0.9 siblings. Okay, so um, uh, interestingly, um, the sibling ship ship size, right, the one child policy in CGS, as we found a higher proportion of only child, but uh, in CFPS, right, uh, still, you can hear say, well, they're not, well, people say reported no siblings, right? Not many. I think it's a 30% or only 30%, okay, in the new generation, 30 or 40%. Well, well, these are, if I, these are some descriptive statistics. Uh, I don't need to go into the details, right? So you can see here is that, that once you have no sibling or one sibling, right, in urban origin, well, there's no much, not much difference. Okay, even okay, you can see here. Even uh, well, the 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 fertility or the uh, the educational attainment, right? Indeed, a decline once you have more siblings because of family family investment. But then you can see here, there's no difference between gen gender difference. Okay, most of the gender difference we observed are in rural origin, okay, in rural areas, right? Well, we can presume there is gender sort of bias, right? Uh, on women, okay, uh, on girls, investment uh, on their education. All right, so for for people at least have, you know, as I said, is a one, I think it's one third of, two, one third of our sample just don't have, so they're only, only child of their parents, right? But if we look at the uh, individuals at, with at least the siblings, okay, now, again, this is very descriptive statistics, right? Showing that uh, one sibling, okay, well, if you have one sibling, may, uh, well, if you have same se se uh, well, sex sibling, right? Well, not much difference, okay? But then if you see, well, the, if there are some difference, okay, the difference, well, it's opposite, right? Then, of course, women, okay, so given the same, same sip, sip, ships, you know, sip, sip size set, right? 
one sibling and two siblings, three siblings. But here, of course, there's some, some, uh, some, something going on here, right? But we can see, well, even you have three siblings, if the three siblings are both either son or daughters, right? You really don't see the difference, okay? Difference <coughs> between them. But here, <coughs> again, if they're opposite sex, women, the, the, the gap tend to be larger, okay, larger. Uh, that's, that's a message, okay, uh, on the, <coughs> uh, from the described statistics. The modern strategy is quite straightforward. Okay, so we take the, the difference, right? The, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the interaction terms, okay? Uh, first is a two-way interaction. We look at a gender difference, then three-way interactions, right? And uh, we also have an additional analysis looking at the rural and the urban, trying to figure out, well, the, we presume, right? The gender, some problems will be stronger in rural areas. Okay, in order to sort out the uh, un family un unobserved attributes which contribute to both, you know, sibship size or affect sibship size or educational attainment, we also run the family fixed, uh, fi sibling fixed effect model to see, and at least I need to prove, right? Sibling effect still exists, it still exists. And, uh, well, that's, that's it. Okay, so, so basically, uh, well, for, for, for rural urban difference, we'll break people into three groups. So those people are born in rural and born in urban and the people are rural urban mobile. Now we found that is a rural, the people of who call mobile people who moved from rural to urban. So these are people who can, mostly women, okay, tend to be more disadvantaged, right? So, so gender gap uh, tend to be larger because women, the family, right? Perhaps will concentrate this resource to send the sons to, uh, to, to, to urban, right? Mostly through education, right? Through, you know, attending college, okay, college education. So these are the major findings, okay? Uh, uh, here are just uh, some statistics, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the figures, okay? Or, or numbers, coefficient. You can see here negative, that means female are more disadvantaged uh, in large, uh, large uh, uh, size family, okay? Then even, Family fixed effect model shows that, okay, well, you can see here, even we net out this, of course, you know, there are some limitation on, on family fixed effect, household fixed effect, right? You have to, and this does not, do not cover the whole sample, okay? The entire sample, because, you know, for those uh, family uh, with no variation uh, uh, in, you know, in, in terms of gender, right, within the family, uh, you, they will be dropped, a single child family will be dropped, right? So these are only family with heterosex uh, children, right, uh, in the family. But we, sh we showed that, okay, this still exists. The, 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 now, the, 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 and uh, for the third dimension about the trend, you can see here is that, uh, well, in the most recent cohort, right, female tend to be, if there's no fertility decline, okay, if we fix the sibship size, female tend to be even more disadvantaged because you know education uh, well now, now costs more, right? Um, all we know that. So the coefficient tends to be more negative. But the good news, right? So the good news is that is that this compositional change, even the fact that the coefficient is larger, right? Is tend to be larger and more significant. But because here, okay, for this younger cohort. There's no, on average, there are fewer, okay, there are much fewer uh, siblings, siblings, siblingship size. Okay, so that's, uh, that will leads to, so basically it's a, it's a group average, a cohort average was very low, okay. Uh, I, and the last number I, sh well, here, okay, is, uh, is about, uh, I want to test what uh, Yu Xie found in Taiwan, right? Um, urban rural difference, you can see here, Again, right now for for female and the younger brothers, right? Uh, well, in among rural origins, right, that disadvantage. In urban, there's no even. We know that even at, in urban areas, they might have two, okay, even three. But a family, right, might not exercise some preference. But in rural areas, that consistent with our findings. And then for those mobile family, okay, so those people who are who have converted to the rural origin, but now they are in urban uh, urban areas, okay, uh, women are even more disadvantaged. So I think this is for people who know 
the Chinese, you know, family, uh, the resource allocations, right? We know this makes a lot of sense, even for some of you who study migrations, right? So typically you would expect that people, well, the, the female migrants, right, who, who move to Pearl River Delta to work, but the one reason was, uh, well, the younger brother needs to, the, the family needs to send the younger brother to college, right? So basically the, the elderly sister saved the money for the, the younger brother's education, okay? So that's, of course, they sacrifice their education, okay, opportunities. So that is the story. And uh, what I did is, uh, I wanted a simulation because you say, well, the, 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 you know, in the younger generation, when people have, tend to have a few kids, right? So if you have more, of course, these kids will be even more, put, be put into more disadvantaged position, particularly for girls, right? But fortunately, in this younger cohort, a few people would have that. So I would say the fertility decline, what will happen is we use a coefficient, right? We estimate, but with the, with the same fertility or same citizenship size in early cohorts, for example, in 1950s, right? This cohort, that means this is actually we observe. Okay? We still observe the gap, the gender gap, but if there were no fertility decline, right? Then again, there is still gender gap, but the gap was much, much larger, okay? much, much larger. That's 1.95, okay. So these are the message, okay. The key messages we generate out of our, our, our research. So to conclude, right, so, well, the gender, uh, uh, education gender gap decline, okay. Individuals, more siblings are more disadvantaged, particularly for girls. There's evidence suggests that gender asymmetric in intro house resource uh, transfer on children's education, particularly in rural areas, right. So we don't have any, any hard evidence or data to show that, right? So that we can only assume the wider difference between rural and urban, right? So uh, in the, uh, another occasion I talk about this, we talked about the, the, the cultural stuff. I would suggest that we could uh, do a little more work, right? To look at the gender ideology, you know, how it varies by different regions, right? Uh, then that could also plug in uh, to help us to, to, to explain uh, the, the statistic uh, findings we observe here. So particularly children in rural areas, right? Having more brothers are particularly detrimental to rural women's education, et cetera. Okay, so these are, now the temporary trend, right? Is more prominent among young cohort and the low fertility region. As I said, in other people, they only have a few, but if you have more, particularly in rural areas, right? Those girls tend to be more disadvantaged, right? The education costs were high. So good news again, because on average will be low. Okay, so most families tend to follow Okay, are in the low fertility regime, right? So in that, in other words, right, females uh, or women will benefit okay, from uh, have benefited from from the from having fewer siblings. Okay, so small sibling size is a is a, a, a important factor that right, contribute to reduce the gender gap in in schooling okay, in, in China. So and a re reflection, okay, on this uh, is uh, well, I, I'm trying to link the two macro demographic process by looking at uh, this family level ongoing uh, process, right? So that's, that's the contribution. Uh, I, um, the more interesting thing, I believe many of you probably also interesting is that uh, well, fertility decline. What about if there's a reverse, right? So you have, you know, fertility increase or what about when we come back to two child policy? You know, what's the implication for gender inequality for child development? Right, for the younger generation, for child generation, also for women, right? So women, you have to sacrifice your career probably to some extent, right? In order to have a second one. So uh, mm. this is open, okay. Um, so I'll stop here. Open question for future research. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Shagang. Um, any questions from the audience? Floor is open. Yeah, choose. Yeah, uh, Jean, uh, Jean uh, can I ask a question first? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, is, uh, thank you, Teacher Wu, for this uh, uh, very interesting uh, and informative uh, presentation. I'm not in uh, particularly this field, uh, uh, but I have, a, I have, a, I have a two questions uh, for clarification. So uh, I'm wondering that uh, in, in your modeling, when you check the effect of uh, uh, siblings, uh, how uh, it looks like uh, zero to one has been excluded from the analysis because you focus on 
uh, sibling number one and until five. So I'm wondering that actually zero to one actually could be the most effective proof. Uh, so, uh, uh, so would you please clarify more about why you exclude uh, the comparison between zero and one? Uh, that's, that's my first question. And my second question is, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I, I kind of assume both of the probably may matter, namely whether the first uh, kid will be a, a boy and, and a girl. And I don't know whether analytically this issue could be tested uh, with the CRPF data. Uh, the, the very last question is about, uh, I think the conclusion is very uh, uh, persuasive, very robust. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, to what extent if we think uh, to decompose the, the female's uh, education achievement, uh, if we decompose this uh, as uh, uh, in this decomposition, how much uh, sibling effect matters in regard to more macro social economic development, such as uh, the better infrastructure and investment of uh, education itself? Yeah. That's my question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, first question is uh, yes, I know. I have some very so in my my analysis, a regression analysis, no sibling again. Uh, they are included. So sibling, oh, I see. No yeah. But then when I conduct this uh, fixed effect models, they are, they simply just cannot right cannot we cannot include them. So they have to be treated separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I agree with you. Uh, it might be. Well, this actually is a, a important, you know, because they contribute, certainly, right? In our early version, I use CFPS, use the CGS data. That data shows perfect, okay? So basically, if I have no sibling, right, for any cohorts, for any cohorts, you know, regarded, you know, in 1950s or now, right, this is no difference, no, no statistic difference. So that is a very strong message. So that means if you don't have siblings, well, the gender does not matter. Okay, so it doesn't matter. The parents would not invest, uh, just to say, oh, because you have a daughter, I would discriminate, I will invest less, right? This is the only child they have. Okay, so, um, so I think the story here, message here, right, I, there was a good suggestion, is, uh, is really this is a demographic change, right? It leads to the compositional change, leads to the, 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 the decline, okay? Again, it's a, it's a group difference, right? The decline in, uh, in gender, uh, Gender gap in gender schooling gaps. Okay, uh, your second question again, is about I, the birth I, order. I mean, uh, is it possible yes. to check? Yeah. Yes. The third question I already sort of yeah. answered that. Good. Okay. So I will do the decomposition part. I was thinking, but I haven't done that. Okay. So the second part, uh, I think I have some interesting findings. I present this one in in, in a talk in in in, in Mannheim. Okay. People raise the question that is also different from what is observed in Western countries, mm. okay, by birth order. And uh, certainly, I think for this data set, right, or this type of research, the, there's a more than one or two papers, okay, there are a lot of, but, so I'm focusing on, even you, you might say, well, for the endogeneity issues, this is a, like uh, something all, already very distracting because I'm looking at the, you know, demographic compositional change, right? Mm. But the, uh, uh, for, to solve the endogeneity issues, this is also uh, could was a paper, right? So although I don't know how much uh, we can add to the literature, okay. Thank you. Okay, Shagang, I, ha I have a question. Uh, I understand that you're doing sibling analysis, right? Yeah. The, the, the advantage of that is that siblings share uh, parental characteristics and uh, a lot of family characteristics. Uh, the, the invariant characteristics, but there are a lot of time variant characteristics that you can't really, I don't know from, I didn't see your equation, so I don't know uh, what kind of time variant um, uh, variables you have control for, uh, such as, uh, you know, the family may move at a certain age uh, for uh, one sibling and then another age at a different sibling, or um, uh, parents got divorced at a certain time, but uh, for sibling one, it may be uh, when he or she was one year old, 
And for sibling two, it might be when they are going to um, elementary or middle school. That th those kind of time varying characteristic. Um, other things like individual characteristic, because uh, in the literature for um, gender differences in education, and again, I don't know if you show the test score differences or not, or I think you're showing the um, schooling level differences here. Um, some of the finding has been that girls work harder and they have better um, soft skills uh, that so make them um, able to perform better and uh, advance to higher grades. These kind of characteristics um, are shown in the literature and we have found some differences too. I just wonder in the sibling model how you take those into consideration. Um, that's, these are all good questions. I, I, <coughs> I have to acknowledge. So first of all, this was something from the early work, I used different data sets, but basic findings, right? Uh, or the argument are quite similar. Then people raise a question about, uh, you know, endogeneity issues, right? Although I can just simply dismiss that, but then I think this is something with the CFPS data, I want to I wanna just check, right? Uh, at least you, should, you have to believe there is a, uh, you know, a size effect, right? And um, so, uh, well, it shows that, but I, 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 I have to say what you, uh, the factors you described, I don't know uh, in CRPS data, perhaps we don't have this kind of information. These are important, okay, uh, in the future for some you know, certain the data collections, right? Uh, we could, uh, but these are all retrospective data. So otherwise you have to interview uh, not only, uh, uh, well, the, maybe not only uh, the, the seeds, right? The, the, the CFPS samples, but also the siblings uh, too. But I, this, is a, this is very, you know, this is one thing I would say is that for time various, okay, so uh, uh, variables, which I, or I really, or family various uh, variables, characteristics, I, I, we don't have data yet, okay. Um, so this is one, and uh, in the audience, if someone is going to, you know, interested, you can go back to CFPS to see, okay, if there are something, variants that might also contribute to, to this. Uh, and a second uh, about, uh, well, that's uh, indeed, as I said, it, there, there are many interesting papers I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work on, okay, I just don't have enough time. But even, you know, the, 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 the work you, you the, the factor you mentioned, so this is something when fertility decline, okay, after fertility, decline, when, when women are not discriminated, Again, women tend to not only say they don't see the difference; they may they tend to do better, right? Because of the skills. Okay, um, uh, you just mentioned the non-cognitive skills uh, and some other soft skills, right? That contributed to to the learning uh, learning behavior. Okay, and the test scores. Uh, uh, but I think our paper, from sociological point of view, we mostly look uh, look at uh, what interesting the so-called this demographic or structural changes, okay? Structural changes, we can assume that plays a role. But again, I think this part of the work shows that is uh, at least the women now, if they're not a, you know, subject to resource constraint, right? Then they, they, they will, they, they perform no difference. And I, more often better, okay? More often better. That will also contribute to which gender gender gap, okay, uh, reduce the gender gap. I have a paper, which again, uh, because of the delay, a long time ago, I had a paper with Xu Duo Duo, uh, the paper we're using Hong Kong data. Uh, uh, well, that paper was uh, the second R&R &R at uh, Sociology of Education, uh, then got rejected because it's on Hong Kong. But we use uh, not the household sample, we use household survey data, we use uh, uh, school-based survey, okay, those test the scores. Um, we show the same, okay, is that uh, because of the allocation of the, the policy change, well, actually, if, if you, if you, if men and women, right, they, oh, no, girl and boys, if they are, they are compete on the same footing, so boys usually are the, you know, will tend to be even worse, okay, doing worse, so that will contribute to, to, to the enlarge the gender gap, okay, so our, let me try to brief, is that because of allocation policy before, 
in Hong Kong, school location policy is uh, you admit the students separately from how many male, how many, how many boys, how many girls, okay? So then suddenly parents found that, uh, well, this is certainly, certainly not correct, right? Because you're supposed to take the same exams, right? Why boys need to be taken, you know, to, to be taken care of, okay? So it's, uh, with, with particular, uh, you know, attention, right? special treatment. So they actually sued to the, to the, the firm, what is it called, Ping Ji Hui, right? Commission on Equal Opportunities. So government realized this is, uh, this is illegal, this practice, okay? So therefore, you would see after you reverse or, or revert, abolish this, this uh, gender separate uh, school allocation, right? You, you found that those, those good schools, right, are just, you know, girls tend to are more likely to much, much, you know, high, you know overrepresented in the high, high quality schools, right? Or band one, band two schools. Okay, so this change demographic, the policy demographic changes, of course, they tend to do better, right? So once and, uh, and over the territory in Hong Kong, then you, you put them, the whole population together, you look at the gender gaps, you see the gender gaps after that, right, becomes, you know, uh, uh, increased. So that's our argument. Uh, I think that, again, building an, uh, upon the assumption you just mentioned, right? I think that I, I believe what you said, okay? Uh, and okay. I hope people, we have more data from, for example, from the, from the, uh, the, the child development data, you have this kind of measurement over time, right? You can actually, I think, it contribute, you know, to have a solid uh, findings, right, to show that. Uh, yeah, this. yeah. So GFPR does have some data, so just need more time to work on it. Uh, Mu Zhen has a question. She's been waiting for a while. So Mu Zhen, go ahead. Uh, Professor uh, Wu, thank you very much for your fascinating and uh, comprehensive presentation. I guess uh, I have like one clarification question and one comment. Uh, and so uh, firstly, uh, I'm wondering that uh, for, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally uh, convinced and impressed by these temporal uh, variations in uh, schooling, like level of, like level of education. Uh, I'm wondering that uh, for the educational achievements that uh, it's based on uh, this uh, test scores at the time of the survey, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think in terms of uh, the measure for educational achievement, uh, it might uh, like uh, vary greatly like across time. And so um, at the time, I'm just not sure that how have you like captured this uh, big demographic change uh, and its influences on this educational achievement because it seems to be uh, like a, a very uh, like a period specific measurement and also it might uh, differ greatly like according to the uh, examination systems and uh, uh, like a temporal change, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I agree with you. So a lot of things going on in China now. So there's many. Yeah. So you can see some other papers I look at it. Well, marketization is one. Then again, right. right? So gender inequality, all this. So this is a micro change, a lot of things, right? Uh, so in this paper, probably I would not be able to do so If you want to do that, that's okay. No, so, so really, <laughs> gender, 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 gender trend, right? You might, this, in this time, not simply look at the family, but looking at the, the, the educational, what happened in education, right? So a lot of, so we cannot assume, right? Even for we, we talk about uh, you know, resource constraints over time, right? Mm -hmm. So this temporal trend, I would say, uh, I think is one criticism for this, right? So how do you, mm -hmm. well, for this trend, right? So I assume uh, other things, uh, which, well, you know, yes, yeah. right, let's see. Um, I, I think specifically, I don't have any, any uh, I agree with you, right? So, uh, but the, this particular paper, I'm only looking through this, this, this lens, right? but uh, I think there's some other uh, trends going on, driving forces going on, right? That could also affect the gender inequality, uh, you yeah. know, educational inequality, or school reform, right? That curriculum yeah. reform, right? all kinds of things. Yes, and you can also also uh, also uh, look at the, you know, some people match that to the to the you know the curriculum reform okay. maybe by different province, right? You have additional yeah, external, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that certainly. Won't I, I think there are some papers on this. Okay. Yeah, I, I think especially related to uh, what Prof. Yang mentioned that uh, especially recently that girls basically outperform boys in schools uh, in all those uh, 
educational achievement outcomes, right? And so, like from the perspective of the parents, it might increasingly be an in educational investment story that uh, probably at the beginning that uh, the boys are giving more attention, but uh, like when um, they grow and uh, age, uh, so like when growth uh, performance advantages pan out, and so it is likely that there might be a like reinforcing or a compensation mechanism that uh, probably like yeah. later ages, uh, the growth uh, disadvantage may actually uh, um, disappear, right? Well, at least uh, uh, reduce. Yes, particularly I, I believe in urban, uh, that's right. sure. Uh, even in rural, so that's uh, I call for so-called a sub-national -na analysis or regional analysis, right? To look at the right. because the good thing for for the CFPS data is that you can break down into different regions. But again, you need to make assumptions. So we really don't have data to show that. For example, mm -hmm. I bust the Shandong. If Shandong have you know sufficient yeah. uh, sample size, I simply just compare Shandong and Jiangsu. I may tell you the difference, I can make a story, right? Mm -hmm. And this, I, I, I believe, you know, families, their behavior quite different, okay? The, the preference the investment children, yeah. right? But Jiangsu, Zhejiang, or Guangdong, certain areas in Guangdong, right? So, so Fujian, there are many places, some places I don't know, right? So, but mm -hmm. uh, certainly some based on my knowledge, right? So there's a huge variation within China, okay. and this could be further studied and also demonstrated, right? Uh, to, to build, you know, um, the knowledge. So some are, we observe, we believe this is true, but no one have ever done this before. Okay, mm -hmm. to show us, right? Right, right. Yeah, think, yeah. Okay, we could we could do that. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much like my comments. Uh, this, I think it would be a uh, very fascinating for them to map out uh, the influences of fertility decline, right, and how that is actually uh, as uh, you have just mentioned, many of those. Uh, regional differences may not be even linear to uh, socioeconomic change. Uh, some of them is totally cultural and could be very specific mm -hmm. to the, the regions, to the provinces. And so I think, yeah, it would definitely be a like, great direction to go, like to map out uh, this uh, big trends, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, region by region, province by province, or to other more uh, like cultural specific uh, areas. Okay, good. Uh, any other questions? If not, it actually we are uh, time to stop. And I, I agree with completely with Professor Wu that uh, th there's uh, much more limited work on gender inequality in China uh, after the reform. And uh, this is a very complex uh, phenomenon, of course, uh, all the way from the more macro um, factor of policy changes to uh, much more micro um, factors of, uh, um, you know, at the family level, how intergenerational contract of um, supporting parents, supporting man, uh, son and daughter could have changed over time, as well as uh, at the individual level of how men, how boys and girls uh, behaviors are different, such as working harder or uh, non-cognitive behavior that we have talked about. So it, it is a multi-level uh, and complex uh, issue that definitely need a lot more analysis. And I think we have learned a lot from uh, Professor Wu's uh, research here. So uh, please join me in thanking uh, Professor Wu Xiaogang for his uh, uh, very stimulating um, presentation. Well, thank you. And thank you. Cook is here? Uh, so, yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. We, we've been communicating, okay. I didn't see you. I saw your name, right? So, okay. But thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for your participation too. Uh, we have almost weekly Friday seminars here, so we would look forward to see you again. Um, in our next sem uh, in our uh, next seminar. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Everyone bye -bye. take care. Have a good semester. <laughs>